Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about chords, tangents, and secants. And in particular, we're going to be talking about how to find the measures of missing arcs and angles that are formed by those uh, segments. If you're looking for how to find missing segment lengths rather than the arcs and angles, you can head to the next video in this playlist. Alright, so angles can be formed by chords, tangents, and secants, and the location of the vertex of the angle can vary. So we have three situations here. We have the vertex could be on the circle. And remember, the vertex is your turning point of the angle, the corner of the angle, that shared endpoint of the two rays. The vertex could be in the circle, or the vertex could be outside the circle, like I'm bolting in each situation here. So depending which scenario we have, there's a different rule on how to find the measure of that angle. So let's start with if the vertex is on the circle. This looks a little similar to the inscribed angles. Uh, the difference with the inscribed angles is it was formed by two chords, um, whereas this is formed by a chord and a tangent. But the rule is actually the same rule for inscribed angles. It's basically half the intercepted arc. So for instance, in this picture, let's say, I'm just going to make up a number here. Let's say that this arc was 140 degrees this angle would be 70 degrees. It would be half its measure. If instead the vertex is inside the circle, the rule is that it's half the sum of the intercepted arcs. So we're adding in this sum part here. So if we want to come up with a situation here, and again, I'm just making up these numbers, Let's say that this arc over here on the left, let's say this is, I don't know, 50 degrees, and let's say that this one is 100 degrees, and I'm trying to find the measure of x here. There's really two intercepted arcs that we're looking at, because if that's x, this is x as well. Those are vertical angles, and they're congruent, so I'm looking at the two arcs that are across from it, and I would add them up, divide by 2, right, half the sum or one half times 50 plus 100, either way you can write it, and I'd get 75 degrees. You could also think about it as the average of those two arcs. The last scenario is if the vertex is outside the circle, this rule is now half the difference, meaning we're gonna subtract, of the intercepted arcs. So I'll just do one quick example here. I'll use this bottom picture that has two secants. Um, let's say that this arc is 120 degrees. I'm referring to this arc that um, is kind of going between the two endpoints of the secant. And let's say that this arc is 40 degrees. If I was trying to find the measure of x, I would find the difference between the two arcs and have it or divide by two, and that would give me 40 degrees. When I subtract, I get 80 divide by two, I get 40. So we're going to be using one of those three rules for each problem in this video. All right, let's take a look at number one. We are asked to solve for x here. We see that the vertex is outside the circle. So we are going to use the rule that we're going to subtract the arcs and we're going to divide that then by two. Okay. So 112 minus 48 gives us 64 we're gonna have that and x is 32 degrees, okay? And again, if you prefer to write it like this, 1 half, 112 minus 48, that's fine. You could write it either of those two ways. All right, number two, the vertex is in the circle. So we're doing half the sum of the arcs. So 96 plus 82, divide by two. Okay, when I add those up, I get 178, divide by two and x is 89 degrees. Number three, vertex is outside the circle. So subtract the arcs, divide by two. Okay, so in order to decide what rule you're looking at, where is the vertex of this angle located? So here's the angle we're looking at for x. The vertex is outside the circle. That's how I knew to pick the rule that has the subtraction in it. All right, for our last example, the vertex is on the circle. So all I have to do is find half of that arc. Okay, and you can follow me doing any of the calculations over on the right on the calculator screen. And I know that X is 83 degrees. 
Okay, number five, we are looking for the measure of angle AEB. If I find that angle, the vertex is inside the circle. So the rule is going to be add the arcs and divide by two, half the sum of those arcs. So add them up, divide by two, and the measure of angle AEB is 104 degrees. Okay, number six, segment or array BA is tangent to circle O. Find the measure of angle ABC. The vertex is on the circle, so I know that it should be half the measure of the intercepted arc, but when I look at this intercepted arc, it's totally blank here. Anytime that happens, that generally is an indicator that you need to be looking at the diameter. And if you notice, BOC is a diameter, so I can infer that this arc is 180 degrees, right? A diameter splits a circle in half, the whole circle is 360. So if I wanna find the measure of angle ABC, it's just half of 180, so 90 degrees. Number seven, PA and PB are tangent to circle O. Find the measure of angle P. All right, here's angle P. The vertex is outside the circle, so I know I need to subtract the arcs. So I might look at this and say, okay, 260 minus something divided by two, but I might stop for a second and say, wait a minute, I don't know the measure of this arc. Well, we know a whole circle is 360 degrees, so this arc must be 100 degrees then in order for this to um, add up to 360 degrees. So if I subtract 260 minus 100, divide by two, this is a good example that not all pictures are drawn to scale, by the way. Um, the measure of angle P is 80 degrees. Okay, number eight, a little different now because we're looking for the measure of the arc. We actually have the measure of the angle, it's 46. We don't know the arc measure. So when we have this, we're gonna start by setting it up the same way. Subtract the arcs, divide by two. But we're gonna make this into an equation and say, well, we know that this should come out to be 46. Anytime you have a fraction on one side and not the other, I like to make them both fractions. And that way I could cross multiply. So 178 minus x times one is just itself. 46 times two is going to give me 92. And now I'm going to work to just isolate the x. So I'm going to subtract 178 over. So I get negative x equals negative 86. And divide by negative one and I get x is 86 degrees. So anytime you're looking for the arc, you use the same formula, but you're just going to have to do a little bit of algebra manipulation to get the value of x. All right, let's look at a couple more. Number 9, ABC is tangent to circle O. Find the measure of angle DBC. A couple of ways we could go about doing this. Uh, the first way that I see is, well, I have... Um, a vertex that's on the circle. So 96 divided by 2 means this angle is 48. But since this is a straight line, they have to add up to 180 degrees. So subtract 48 from 180. And I know that the measure of angle DBC is 132 degrees. The other option would be to find the value of this arc over here and then have that. That would also give you um, the same answer of 132. Number 10, AC and DB are perpendicular. Okay, that means we have right angles in here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw them in the picture. Solve for X. Okay, this reminds me of the other question before where we're looking for an arc instead. So I'm going to start out with my rule. Add the arcs, divide by 2. But I'm going to set it equal to the measure of the angle. So I'm going to set it equal to 90. I'm going to put that over 1 so I can cross multiply. So 162 plus X is equal to 180. Subtract 162 on both sides, and I get that x is 18 degrees. Number 11, solve for the measure of angle DEA. So I'm looking for this angle in here. I'm just going to put an x in here, the one we're looking for. So if I want to find the two intercepted arcs to add up, this is x as well, so I'm going to use a 75, but I'm missing the value of this arc over here. Anytime you're looking at a question, you're like, wait a minute, I don't have 
the arc value that I need, the arc measure, you want to either look at is there a diameter involved or can I use the whole circle? So I do have diameter DOB and I know that this piece from B to A is 137. So if I want to find the missing value of arc DA, let's subtract and this comes out to be 43 degrees. So now this whole half the circle has a sum of 180. Okay, based on that, now we can go and do our rule. So add the arcs, divide by two, and we get that the measure of angle DEA is 59 degrees. Okay. I do wanna cover one other option in this video of how you could have gone about this question, um, just so that you see other options here. So I'm just gonna erase that for a minute if you had instead used the diameter to find the measure of arc DC, you would have found that this was 105 degrees. Let's say you use the 105 and the 137. I just wanna show you what happens. If I use those two arcs and divide by two, once I add them, I get 121 degrees. So I know now that this angle is 121. I could have found this 59 by saying, hey, these are on a straight line now and they're supplementary. So if you ever find the one that's next to the one you want, you could just use supplementary angles to do that extra step at the end. Okay. All right, and our last question here, we're gonna solve for X and Y. So when I look at this here, seven Y and three Y are definitely the arcs that I need to subtract. When I divide by two, I should get X. But when I look at this, there's not really a way for me to solve this. I mean, I could definitely combine the 7y minus 3y, right? That would be okay to do as 4y over 2, or even simplify that as 2y. But that doesn't actually give me a measurement. I don't actually get an answer there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I could find another equation that I could write to help me get a variable measure. So I see that in this picture, 7y and 3y are making up the entire circle. So that means that they have to have a sum of 360. So 10y equals 360, and y comes out to be 36. So now I have my value of y. And let's say I plug that in over here, 2 times y, so 2 times 36 is equal to x. And now I have that x is 72. So once I found one answer, I substitute it in. And now I have my missing values of X and Y. Okay. Hopefully this video helps you understand a little bit more about the different angles and arc measures that are involved with chords, tangents, and secants. Again, the next video in this playlist uses chords, tangents, and secants as well, but it shows you how to find the missing segment lengths. Thanks for watching.